Creating dashboards is an essential part of Spider Impact to help visualize performance. To start, I'll review a few dashboards that have already been developed. I'll select Dashboards and select the Dashboards org. And then I'll click Select. The Call Center Key Measures dashboard provides a cockpit view of performance across six key measures in the Call Center. For select and month, it provides a colorized view of performance, the actual value, change from the previous period, red and gold thresholds, and the normalized score. The product delivery and effectiveness dashboard provides a colorized view of monthly performance where I can see one measure in green, one in red, and one in yellow. I see trends to previous period performance in the upper left a description for each of the measures, and the actual value for, in this case, June of 2020. At the bottom is a chart showing a trend for the past year of frequent versus infrequent used customers. Other dashboards already built are the sales pipeline, intervention required, and the increase ad clicks dashboard. Having shown a few examples of existing dashboards, I'll move on to creating a dashboard from scratch. I'll select New Dashboard and type a name like Training. Under Starting Layout, I'll leave the default of blank and I'll select Create. I get presented with a toolbar from which I'll select Settings on the far right. I'll start with Background Color, and to switch to a brighter background, I'll change from gray to white. I'll then return to Settings by clicking on Background Color. Under Snap To, I'll see that the options are Widgets, Grid, and None. If I select Grid, there's a visual grid which will help align widgets on the screen. If I select None, there is no guide to help with alignment. And if I switch back to Widgets, this will draw a line between widgets when aligning. So since I like that, I'll leave that as is. If I wish to add a new widget to the dashboard, I'll select the plus icon in the top left here. I have the ability to add 10 different types of widgets to the dashboard as shown here. The first option in the top left is the ability to add an image. I'll select image and then get presented with two different options. Upload image is typically used for adding image images that are only needed on one particular dashboard. I would select it, navigate to the appropriate directory, select the image, and then select open. However, I'll select cancel and show an alternative option here. Add Shared Image allows for the selection of images that have been previously loaded to the Files area. If they ever need to be edited or updated, I would make the revision within Files, and that change would be reflected on all the dashboards that contain that image. In this case, I'll select the latest version of the Spider Strategies logo from the Dashboards org, and then I'll select Add. I would then resize and maybe reposition the logo. In this case, I'm just going to click on it and delete it. Next I'll add a text widget by selecting the plus icon again. This time I'm going to select text. To add text I need to double click within the text box. I could type any text that I desire like maybe training dashboard. I would then highlight it and I could bold, re formatted as desired, but for now I'll just leave it as is. Alternatively, I can add text with function names that dynamically update. And for an example of that, I'll enter some functions like today, calendar, 
and calendar dash period. And notice each of these are wrapped in brackets here. I'll then click save in the top right and then done in the bottom left to see those values dynamically update. We'll see we've got today's date and then selections that are based on the periodicity in the top right. Now if I were to go in and switch that from June 2020 to something else like quarterly and then select show results, I'll see a couple of the values update automatically on the dashboard. I'll now switch back to monthly and the month of June. I'll go back to edit, select the plus icon again, and note that I can add bubbles, charts, speedometers, or linear gauges one at a time. But in lieu of that, I'll select new dashboard. I'll then type automatic for the name. And I'll note that as long as I have at least one measure defined in the org, in this case I have five, I have the ability to have Spider Impact create a dashboard auto-filled with speedometers, gauges, charts, or bubbles. I'll select bubbles for instance, and then click create. Notice that all of the measures in my dashboards org have been auto-created. Note that if I had selected one of the other options, I would have had all the measures displayed in that format. For example, speedometers. Okay, moving on, I'll select training revenue, and I'll move that over to the right and then down a little bit. I'll then select product revenue. I'll select edit in the top right to edit this particular widget and see there are a number of options I can change on the bubble, like the font size, drill down destination, what is showing on it, the background and size, whether it should be kept in front of other objects, locked in position, duplicated or deleted. Towards the bottom I'll select duplicate. I'll get take that latest instance and I'll move that over to the right. I'll go back to the first instance of product revenue, select edit again, and this time I'm going to focus on an option called set period. I'll click on that, and I'm going to change show to one period earlier. Then I'll click done. I see the color change to yellow, which is the performance for the prior month. Now to see that month visually on screen, I'll need to click on the bubble again, select edit, this time I'm going to select the option called Showing, and I'm going to enable Period. Once I do that, I see that May 2020 appears. I'll now click on the second instance of Product Revenue, select Edit, Showing, enable the Period, and this time I'll see June of 2020 appear. So I'm not locked into seeing just the performance for the period selected in the top right. I can show as many different months as I want. I can perhaps display a trend for a quarter or maybe even a full year. Next I'll click on training revenue. I'll select edit and showing and I'll show that I have the ability to show other things like the actual value, score, and color. I'll enable each of these and see these values now display beneath the bubble. Speedometers and linear gauges also allow for the display of thresholds. To show an example of that, I'll select the plus icon again. This time select speedometer. I'll expand financial and increase revenue. And I'll click on training revenue and select add. Note the widget animation that appeared for a brief second as the widget was being added. And it will help me quickly locate it as I click onto the menu. I'll drag the speedometer over, select edit, select showing, 
and see the thresholds option at the bottom. I'll enable it and note that if the measure had both goal red flag and best worst thresholds, I would have had the option to choose which ones I want to display. For this measure, I only have goal and red flag, so that is the only option available to me. With that said, and to save room, I'll now delete the speedometer. Next, I'll drag the bottom three bubbles down a little bit. I'll then select the top three bubbles, and I'll review some cos cosmetic options. Now to do that, what I'm going to do here is select from the top left edge of the first bubble, and then I'd work my way to the bottom right edge of the last bubble. And that creates a big rectangle around all three. Now I have the ability to align each of those bubbles. If I go to the top, there's an option here called Align. I'll click on that. And if I want to align each of those at the top, I would just click the top option there. To the right of Align is the Distribute option. I'll click on that and see I have options of horizontally, vertically, and evenly. In this case, I'll select horizontally and we'll watch how product revenue gets shifted over a little bit to the right. With that looking good, I'll now click Save in the top right. Next, I'm going to advance my period from June to September. Now, I might have done that on accident. If so, I have the ability to jump back to the default login period by selecting the drop-down arrow. In my environment, I have that defined as the prior month. So since the current month is July, I have a back to June 2020 option. I'll click that and get quickly taken back to June as opposed to having to manually work my way back. There's one more feature I'd like to show with this particular dashboard. I'll click on Total Gross Profit at the bottom and delete it. One second later, I might realize that was a mistake as I really meant to delete Total Revenue. I would recommend taking the few seconds to manually add that bubble back, but in lieu of that, I'll show the Swap option. Before using Swap, I must save any pending changes, so I'll click Save in the top right. I'll then click on Swap, select the measure I want to replace, in this case Total Revenue. I'll confirm I'm changing the correct measure in the top left. That looks good. I'll then expand Financial, expand Increase Profit, and I'll select Total Gross Profit. I'll select Swap and Save in the bottom right and then select Done. I'll confirm that total revenue is gone and it's been replaced by total gross profit. Furthermore, the swap is a permanent change as save is not enabled in the top right. Getting back to other widget types that can be added, like a chart, I'll select New Dashboard. I'll type blank for the name, and then I'll select Create. I'll select the plus icon again, and this time I'm going to select Chart. I see that there are three options. However, I usually have the chart I want to add already built under Charts and Reports. Since I do, I'll select Existing Chart. I'll select the revenue chart and I'll click Add. I'll click on the dashboard and scroll down and I'll see a pie chart and a table at the bottom. These both can be resized and moved separately. However, if I don't want the table, I can scroll back up, click on the chart, select Edit, 
and disable show table. I would then be left with just the pie chart, which I'll now delete to save some room. To add a report, I'll select Add. And then I'll click on Report. Note that with reports, I can only add reports that have previously been developed. I'll click on Downward Trending this time and choose Add. I'll then click on to the report. An important thing to note is that if I click Edit in the top right here, I can only change the properties of the report. If I need to change the structure of it, I would need to make those changes within Charts and Reports. I would then need to add the updated report to the dashboard. Once again, to save room, I'll delete this one from the dashboard. Another option is the ability to add a note. I'll go back to the plus icon, select Notes, select Scorecard Item, expand Financial, expand Increased Profit, select Total Gross Profit, and click on Add. I'll click onto the note, select edit, and go to an option called display as. I'll then switch to full notes. I'll move the note up a bit and make it a bit larger, just so I can see all of the notes that are part of it. I'll go back to edit, select font size, and adjust the font to 13. Note that this only adjusts the font of the notes themselves. The note properties like the author do not change. I'll go back to Edit and Showing. I'm going to turn off everything except Replies here. I see that note widgets are redrawn based on what features are shown, which helps conserve a great deal of space on the screen. I'll now save these changes. So one more thing I'd like to show with notes. Spider Impact will make any URLs clickable. I can see that already with the underline, but to prove that out, I'll select Done. I'll then click on the link and see it open in a new page or a new window here. And with that, I'll close that page. I'll now select Edit. Again, save room, delete the note, and move on to the Timeline widget. I'll select Plus, I'll select Timeline, and I'll make note that this is only applicable for initiatives. I'll now select which initiative I want to bring across and I'll click on Increase Quantity of Ad Clicks. And then click Add. I'll click onto the timeline and see the initiative I selected and all tasks and milestones that are tied to it. If I click Save and Done, I'll see that if I click onto a bar, like Research target audience to find more reason why it's sitting in red, I can get that detailed information. And if I click it again, that display will go away. I'll select Edit and select the plus icon one more time here. The last widget is the Embedded widget, which I'll select. For this one, I simply need to type in the name of the URL. But I must take note of a couple requirements. The embedded link must be HTTPS, and the site I'm adding must be allowed to be embedded in other sites. If the link I was adding satisfied both of those requirements, I would then click Done. But in this case, I'll just select Cancel. 